Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 710. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about the stock market for the next 45 days because Those days are really key as we are finding ourselves in what I call the chasm. And that chasm is a bit dark and murky. We're not sure all that's going to be happening in there, but I have a few ideas of things that might be happening that I'm going to share with you at the end of this podcast. But first, I want to review how we got to the chasm because so much has happened and it happened so quickly and it's been such an emotional roller coaster ride. I think we really have to revisit some of how we got here before we can go on and talk about where we're going. So let's review what I talked about, the four phases that got us into this 30 plus percent decline in the stock market. As we're all well aware, there was a virus that happened in Wuhan, China, which is where a lot of manufacturing occurs. And the first phase was seeing the virus erupt, learning about it. We really didn't foresee the full effects of a pandemic happening. So initially, businesses were worried about their supply chains and manufacturing and being able to get supplies. And that's what first started the sell-off. Then we had the oil war between OPEC and Russia, and that dropped our oil price below what it costs United States shale oil producers to produce unconventional oil from shale. And that was intentional. They wanted to reduce the price of oil to put those shale producers out of business. And the third phase was us realizing that the pandemic was here and we were having the shutdown of cities and concerts and sporting events and a lot of travel. And eventually we had the stay at home orders. Then we experienced phase four, which was another leg down in oil, where oil reached an 18 year low in prices. And then the lack of demand due to people staying at home caused a huge oil glut. And that glut is so extensive that oil tankers are full of oil. The United States Reserve is full of oil. And actually, oil producers are starting to shut down oil production. And then, of course, since this time, we've seen the massive layoffs or furloughs, although as I've reported, 80% are expected to be temporary. We've had massive buying of supplies, food, cleaners, toilet paper, paper towels, and medicines. We had the Federal Reserve backstop all of the debt, junk bonds, mortgages, all kinds of loans, and reduce interest rates to 0%. We had Congress pass aid packages and relief bills to the tune of somewhere between four to six trillion dollars. We had $2 trillion of infrastructure spending announced and another call for a bill for infrastructure. We've had a delay of our taxes, student loans, foreclosures, all kinds of financial delays that are allowing people to have a little bit of a breather. And of course, the checks going out for some relief as well. We had school closings and people having to work from home, other people not being able to work at all, such as restaurants. And we have retailers really in a heap of trouble now with JCPenney and Neiman Marcus declaring bankruptcy. Meanwhile, the stock market has bounced off of its lows and it has retraced over 50% of the drop that it initially had. But here's what's concerning. The largest five stocks in the S&P 500 now make up 22% of its market capitalization. That's five stocks responsible for 22% of the index. 
That's more than what happened at the top of the great dot-com bubble. And in times of fear, investors try to survive by piling into a few stocks that they feel confident in. But that usually doesn't last because if we start another decline, margin calls will force sales of stocks indiscriminately. And if a market is heading lower, everything can be sold again. So even if you're in those five, which are Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, and Facebook, that doesn't guarantee that your stocks won't sell off. Of course, they did sell off in this first 32% decline that we experienced. And again, that's because people borrow money to buy stocks on margin, and when the market goes down, automatically that triggers the selling of those stocks. So when you see a narrowing of markets and concentration into a handful of stocks like we're seeing right now, that is often evidence that the market is topping. One of the reasons I think it's topping is because now we're getting some earnings numbers, we're getting some guidance from companies, and those numbers are telling us the market is too high here. Even though market analysts will look out six to nine months in advance, the fact is the numbers are coming in worse because people were originally hoping for a V-shaped recovery. And even though I told you I didn't expect a V-shaped recovery, a lot of people did. And so now they're having to reassess because they realize we're not going to bounce back 100%. We're not going to just go back to where we were quickly and everything's back to normal. The horrible data of the jobless claims has been terrible and it's going to continue. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. I think there's a lot of other unexpected bad news that's in the chasm, as I've been explaining. We're going to have more bankruptcies. We're going to have more companies closing their doors. We're going to have supply chain disruptions. We're going to have unforeseen downside surprises that we don't expect because these are things that have been filtering through the economy that we just haven't heard about yet. But I'm convinced that there are things out there that will surprise us on the downside, unfortunately. And while I had hoped we were seeing the buying opportunity of a lifetime, we've now bounced to a great point to sell some of your portfolio before we drop to what I now believe will be lower lows on the Dow. Now, it's very difficult to try and time the market. I'm not necessarily saying that, but I am saying that you can do some tactical strategies to perhaps raise some cash. Maybe 25% of your portfolio can be used to sell some of your losers, your worst performers, and freeing up some cash that could be used if the market does go lower. The next 45 days in particular will be uncertain. And I see this as getting near an important top before we start heading down again. Last week, we had the strongest week since the 1930s. And these are record numbers that we're putting up in terms of bounces in the market. This can happen in an ongoing decline. It's not uncommon to see powerful, strong bounces up before another decline starts. And I found an article that agrees with me about the next 45 days. So I wanna share that with you. This is from Market Watch. It was written by Mark DeCamber, and it says, the next 45 days are the most critical period in US financial history, says stock market expert who profited in 1987 and 2008 crises. And the article says, after recovering a chunk of the losses racked up during the worst of the coronavirus-induced sell-off last month, the stock market finds itself at a crucial inflection point, writes Alan B. Lance. The next 45 days may just become the most critical period in U.S. financial history, he wrote in a newsletter published Wednesday. While on average we may face a bear market every 10 years, this one is like no other, he said. The contrarian money manager, who is a disciple of famed investor Sir John Templeton, said that the timing and execution of the reawakening of the U.S. economy from its dormancy could be one of the biggest factors in determining how the market recovers from COVID-19, which forced swaths of businesses to shut down to help stem the spread of the deadly contagion that has infected more than 2 million people 
and claimed 137,000 lives, according to data aggregated by Johns Hopkins University as of Wednesday evening. And even if the economic revival is executed flawlessly, the founder of the eponymous Toledo, Ohio-based investment advisory firm said the result will be a so-called U-shaped recovery, where a rebound in business and consumer activity from pre-crisis levels will be long and slow. Even if we execute properly, the recovery will take time, and a best-case scenario is a U-shaped recovery, he wrote. The much-talked-about V-shaped recovery is no longer in the equation because of the unprecedented combination of negatives with this crisis, he said, referring to hope for a recovery that is sharp and fast. The money manager's comments came as President Trump has underscored his eagerness to restart the economy after a string of bleak reports demonstrate the damage the illness is doing to the health of small and large businesses. Indeed, a reading on Wednesday of business activity in the New York State area, the New York Empire State Index, dropped to a record low of negative 78.2 in April from a negative 21.5 in the previous month. A report on U.S. industrial production fell 5.4% in March, the steepest decline since early 1946, and retail sales in March registered a record 8.7% slump. Meanwhile, a reading of confidence among U.S. home builders in April fell to its lowest reading since 2012 and the largest monthly change in the index's 30-year history. Last week, President Trump said he would love to open the country at the start of May. However, business leaders have urged that the president increase testing for the illness derived from the novel strain of coronavirus before revving the economy back up, according to the Wall Street Journal. Experts also believe that reopening the economy without proper testing, absent a vaccine or effective therapies, could result in a resurgence of the disease. Stock benchmarks ended Wednesday lower but have rebounded mightily since putting in their most recent bear market low on March 23rd. From that point, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 23.88%, the S&P 500 Index has gained about 22%, and the NASDAQ Composite Index has returned 21.68%, supported by U.S. monetary and fiscal stimulus. Lance, who forged a relationship with Templeton until the investment guru's death in 2008, is a firm believer in contrarian investing, finding values when others see battered assets. Back in 2007, he advised clients to sell before the market soured, and in 1987, he sidestepped the crash, a period in which the Dow saw a 22% drop in a single session. This time, the investor advocates that investors adopt caution for a crisis that is unlike any he has seen in his career. Unfortunately, this crisis has all three parts of the past bear market sell-offs, he wrote. This pandemic not only threatens America's standard of living, but also could position us as a secondary global power. That said, Lance still sees opportunities in stocks like Amazon, UPS, Merck, Cisco Systems, and Abbott Labs, to name a few, which he recommends with specific limits. End of article. All right. Well, if you're not familiar with Sir John Templeton, he was an amazing investor. He lived in the Bahamas, and he was known in the 2000.com bubble for being able to identify the peak in 2000 and then shorting stocks all the way down. So he had an amazing track record. He was an international investor, a leader in that area, and lived to a very old age. And as this article stated, he passed away some time ago. But this is apparently someone who has come from Sir John Templeton's same strategies and is able to use the same models, perhaps, that Sir John Templeton did. Anyway, we're picking up a lot of the same kind of cycles going on here. And what I'm saying is the next 45 days through the end of May is where I'm really picking this up will be uncertain. And I see this as getting near an important top right now before we start heading down again. Now, I don't know whether we're going to head down on Monday or we're going to head down next Friday. I can't tell you the exact top, but I can tell you that we are moving into resistance here as we are getting back to our moving day averages. And we would be looking for a topping process now. And since we're seeing money accumulate in just five stocks, 
That's confirming that this is a topping process, as well as investor sentiment being off the charts at a record level right now from a contrarian point of view would also indicate we are near a topping process or in a topping process and near a possible top to this bounce that we've seen. So let's review where we are now. We're in the chasm of uncertainty and shifting from where we hit a wall with the economy going 70 miles an hour to the patient that is the economy being in the hospital and that's all of us staying at home and now the patient slowly being released from the hospital, maybe going into physical therapy. And that might be a good analogy for some states opening up and some states not yet able to open up yet. We're in this gradual reopening phase now of the United States economy. And of course, New York has been one of the very worst places hit. Our thoughts and prayers go out to everyone in the New York area, as well as everyone who's been impacted by this horrible virus. And we see that New York is also a major portion of the United States economy being the most populous area and not only the New York area, but the surrounding states also being impacted heavily from this virus. We also know that although the government has put in trillions of dollars of stimulus, that takes time to work its way through the economy. And so I don't expect us to see any fast recovery soon. Just like he said in the article, he's not expecting a V shape. He's looking at more of a U shape. And I've always maintained it's a W shape. But whatever it is, I think that it is going to take time. And that means the stock market is going to go lower to try to find the right valuation for the next several months. As those realities of the economy coming back to life slower than we expected filter its way into perception and filter its way into the numbers and where fair value is for the stock market. Now, the most important thing is the consumer because the consumer makes up 70% of the economy. So how do we see the consumer right now? When we look at consumer confidence numbers, they were at an all-time high in February of 101. In March, they dropped to 89.1, and in April, they dropped to 71, which is the lowest reading we've seen since December of 2011. The consumer is more in a hoarding mode right now, I would say, and a buyer of necessities than they are buying of maybe something that they want to have. People are feeling more cautious, like they want to take their time, save up their money. Many people are saying with their stimulus checks, they're not going to spend them. They're just going to save them. So you see, it's a change in mentality about spending. And if the consumer does not feel comfortable spending, that is going to be the most important determinant of what happens to the economy. And that right there tells us the economy is not going to recover quickly, but there is going to be a process where it's going to take some time for the consumer to recover. Now, having said that, we did get a surprise of something good. Well, good economically anyway, and that is that 40% of cruises and airlines have been booked for the future. So it shows that we won't be back to 100% perhaps anytime soon, but we are making some progress and some people who might be in states that haven't been affected as much feel very differently than people who are in states that have been impacted dramatically. There's kind of a different experience of reality depending on where you live. If you live in the middle of New York City, your reality is very different than if you live in Wyoming or Idaho. So depending on where you live, what your experience is with your state, where the hot spots are, what I'm saying is the consumer is going to have a different reaction perhaps. So while we're in this topping process and we have experienced a very strong bounce, I again say this is a good time to become a little more tactical than we normally would. Normally we would just hold through everything, but I really foresee that now we will go down and test the lows and likely make new lows. So I'm recommending you take 25% of your portfolio and 
Take your weakest things, your losers, and raise some cash to take advantage of a potential new low, maybe happening in the next 45 days. That could be when we see the buying opportunity of a lifetime, but unfortunately, I don't think we've seen it yet. I think that the lows that we saw on March 23rd were a particular low for that period of time, but now that things have turned into a stay-at-home order and the consumer has gotten a lot less optimistic in terms of their spending, I feel that the market will go down to lower lows and a lower valuation before rebounding. Now, don't get me wrong, I still think the market will rebound. However, I think you are going to have the buying opportunity of a lifetime in the future. That's why I'm recommending you raise some cash here. Nobody knows for sure. I can't guarantee this. Please don't take any undue risk to do this. I promise you, when we finally see the bottom, you won't feel bullish. That's what bottoms are. Bottoms in stock markets just give you a sick feeling in your stomach and the last thing you'll feel like doing is buying. But that's exactly the point of maximum pessimism where you will want to buy. But I don't believe we've seen that yet. For all the reasons I explained to you, we will temporarily see a new low before making a strong recovery. And I do still see recovery in the back half of the year, especially into the fourth quarter, but there's a long time between now and September. And I think some smart strategic moves and having some cash to take advantage of a potential opportunity that could be the buying opportunity of a lifetime would be wise for you to do here. Will we get through this? We absolutely will get through this. But it is going to be an intense time, I believe, in the next 45 days while we're in the chasm. And if you're wanting me to be beside you for years to come, this might be the right time to join the VIP experience. While I realize not everyone is in the financial situation to do that, I have extended a 50% discount offer for you. So you have incredible savings now. And once you're in, there's no more further payment. So we will invest side by side for years to come. You can either click on the link on my homepage at lyndapjones.com for more information, or you can set up a time to talk with me. And there's a link in the show notes for that. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.